The situation is quite dire. Yesterday morning, the new Vulcan rocket made a smashing debut, launching from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and performing flawlessly. After 50 minutes of flight, the rocket's upper stage deployed its primary payload, the Peregrine Lunar Lander, into a moon-bound trajectory. United Launch Alliance declared complete success with its new rocket and, and Peregrine became the first American commercial lunar lander to launch on a mission to the moon. The success of ULA and NASA has received much praise. Congratulations and to Blue Origin 2, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a tweet. Congrats to ULA launch on the first flight of Vulcan. On board was the astrobotic Peregrine lander, which is carrying five NASA payloads as part of our first CLPS, or CLPS, launch to the moon. We are showing the power of American innovation and paving the way for future Artemis missions. Bill Nelson also shared. Sadly, space is not as easy as we thought. Thus, it requires the utmost skill and patience. After the deployment of the spacecraft, its developer, Pittsburgh-based Astrobotic, also said its ground controllers had successfully established contact with Peregrine. All seemed well as the spacecraft entered a highly elliptical orbit that will bring it toward the moon in the coming weeks. Engineers checking out the robotic Peregrine moon lander ran into problems, keeping the spacecraft properly oriented, a potentially crippling issue for the first U.S. lunar lander since the Apollo program more than half a century ago. Astrobotic built avionics systems, including the primary command and data handling unit, as well as the thermal, propulsion, and power controllers, all powered on and performed as expected, the Pittsburgh-based company reported. Unfortunately, an anomaly occurred, which prevented Astrobotic from achieving a stable sun-pointing orientation. The team is responding in real time as the situation unfolds and will be providing updates as data is obtained and analyzed. In a second, update, the company said engineers believe the likely cause of the sun-pointing issue is a propulsion anomaly that, if proven true, threatens the ability of the spacecraft to soft land on the moon. Additionally, Astrobotics said the spacecraft battery is reaching operationally low levels. Commands were sent to reorient the Peregrine to improve solar power generation. But the spacecraft then entered a region of its orbit where communications were interrupted. After contact Contact was restored, engineers confirmed the spacecraft's solar arrays were oriented toward the sun, which helped charge onboard batteries. It appears the failure within the propulsion system is causing a critical loss of propellant. The team is working to try and stabilize this loss, but given the situation, we have prioritized maximizing the science and data we can capture. We are currently assessing what alternative mission profiles may be feasible at this time, the company said. Peregrine will need its main engine to control the spacecraft descent down to the lunar surface. Based on additional information provided by the company, it appears that time is running out to fix the problem. Just before entering a known period of communication outage, the team developed and executed an improvised maneuver to reorient the solar panels toward the sun. Shortly after this maneuver, the spacecraft entered an expected period of communication loss. That could mean the company will not attempt to land the Peregrine lander on the moon as it was expected to do on the 23rd of February. Later on Monday, Astrobotics shared the first image of the Peregrine lander in space, the photograph showing the outer layers of insulation on the vehicle wrinkled. The distorted material was the first visual clue that aligns with our telemetry data, pointing to a propulsion system anomaly, the company said in a post on the social media platform X at 4.12 p.m. Eastern. It was not clear whether the company was still considering a potential path toward the moon or was working to map out an alternative destination for the lander, According to NASA's Deep Space Network website, Peregrine re-established communication with the controllers on Earth by around 11.30 a.m. Eastern. The communication then stopped again about 15 minutes later. Most recently, Astrobotic has given a new update. They said an ongoing propellant leak is causing the spacecraft's attitude control system, or ACS thrusters, to operate well beyond their expected life cycles to keep the lander from an uncontrollable tumble. If the thrusters can continue to operate, they believe the spacecraft could continue in a stable sun pointing state for 
approximately four more hours based on current fuel consumption. Therefore, the current goal would be to get Peregrine as close to lunar distance as possible before it loses the ability to maintain its sun pointing position and subsequently lose power. NASA is working with Astrobotic to determine the impact of the HSC's five science investigations aboard the company's Peregrine Mission 1 spacecraft. While it's too soon to understand the root cause, NASA is supporting Astrobotic and will assist in reviewing flight data, identifying the cause, and developing a plan forward. There are many challenges with spaceflight, and we're incredibly proud of the Astrobotic and NASA teams that have put us one step closer to a robotic return to the lunar surface as part of Artemis. This delivery service model is a first for the agency, and with something new, there is a higher risk, said Joel Kearns, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration at NASA's Science Mission Directorate. NASA is committed to supporting our commercial vendors as they navigate the very difficult task of sending science and technology to the surface of the moon. Copies of four of the NASA payloads aboard Peregrine are expected to fly on future flights, including the Laser Retro Reflector Array, Near Infrared Volatile Spectrometer System, Neutron Spectrometer System, and Linear Energy Transfer Spectrometer. The Peregrine Ion Trap Mass Spectrometer is not currently on any future clips flight. For now. The last time the U.S. launched a moon landing mission was back in December of 1972. Apollo 17's Gene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt became the 11th and 12th men to walk on the moon, closing out an era that has remained NASA's pinnacle. The Soviet Union and the U.S. racked up a string of successful moon landings in the 60s and 70s before putting touchdowns on pause. China joined the elite club in 2013 and India last year. But the previous year also saw landers from Russia and a private Japanese company slam into the moon. An Israeli nonprofit crashed in 2019. NASA gave the two companies millions to build and fly their own lunar landers. The space agency wants the privately owned landers to scope out the place before astronauts arrive while delivering NASA tech and science experiments as well as odds and ends for other customers. Astrobotics contract for the Peregrine lander, 108 million US dollars. Now all the hope can be put on next month when SpaceX will provide the lift for a lander from Intuitive Machines. The Houston-based company is expected to use a SpaceX Falcon 9 to launch its uncrewed IM-1 mission from Cape Canaveral with the aim to land on February 22nd, a day before the ULA mission would land as planned, sparking something of a private space race. The truck-sized Nova C is a hexagonal cylinder with six landing legs measuring about 4 meters tall and 1.6 meters wide. The two-ton lander will lift off carrying five NASA science payloads. Trent Martin, the VP of Lunar Access at Intuitive Machines, said it will take roughly five to seven days after launch for the lander to get to the moon and then about a day before touching down on the surface, although the timeline will continue to be refined as launch day approaches. About 90 seconds after spacecraft separation from the Falcon 9's second stage, the lander will be powered on and begin to acquire telemetry and other data about the health of the spacecraft. Martin said within a few hours of that time, they would also conduct an initial checkout of the engine with a test firing. We then do multiple trajectory burns to slightly update our trajectory on the way to the moon, Martin said. The final trajectory burn will put them in orbit about 100 kilometers above the moon's surface, where they will remain for about 24 hours as they plan their powered descent down to the ground, which lasts about 15 minutes. The lander is intended to be in orbit around the moon for roughly a day, 24 hours, since they have a cryogenic system. The longer they stay in orbit, the warmer the propellants become. Aside from aiming for a lunar landing, Nova C is meant as a pathfinder for NASA's human spaceflight missions to and on the moon. It'll act as a scout for the Artemis III crewed landing. Launching for the moon's south pole no earlier than 2025. The greater NASA-led Artemis program already launched the uncrewed Artemis 1 around the moon in 2022, and with Artemis 2, aims to bring a crew of four on a similar mission in 2024. With the possible failure of landing the Peregrine, SpaceX's Intuitive Machines mission is considered to be in an informal race to be the first private venture to safely land on the moon. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and if 
you'd like to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.